originally in Spanish, September 2024. Hello, Yazi. How are you? Hi, Robert. Very good. How are you? Fine, thank you. I'm working here. It's busy up there. A little bit, yeah. A lot of movement. They don't like us for being troublemakers. But there are more and more of you. Much to their displeasure, yes. That's what Alcione-class ships are for, to counter-intimidate. And yes, we accept that we are getting very militarized, but it's either that or get eaten. Not everything can always be love and light. Not when faced with races that are constantly disrespecting you. And is Elenim out of the medical pod yet? No, not yet. She still has some time to go. When she comes out, she is going to find out a lot of new things. That's why people don't want to go into those medical pods, because when they get out, the world is different. Will she return to Earth orbit? We don't know. It will depend on her. And the Teleka? Are you going to dismantle it or just repair it? They haven't told me anything yet, but I doubt very much that they will dismantle it. First, they turn it into a hotel. Seriously. It is one of the ships with the most history, if not the most. The Vril girls with the Nazis, it came out of Toleka. The Eisenhower thing came out of the Toleka. The Khrushchev thing, it came out of the Toleka. Billy Mayer, out of the Toleka. The first contact project, out of the Toleka. This disclosure, out of the Toleka. Now it's Sadik Leia's turn to generate its own story. It is this year's latest model. They are very similar on the outside at first glance, but very different up close, but especially inside. We still get lost here. And do you notice the changes? Yes, there were many advances. And many places have never been used. At first, none, of course. The furniture has protectors on it, seals, Everything is new, and it smells new. And best of all, everything works. And the new AI, the one that replicates MoMA. Sadi, the AI, yes, it looks more advanced. And what about MoMA? Is it integrated with Sadie? No, she just passed on a lot of her necessary data especially since it's the same crew. Mama stayed in Tolek, but they will surely repair her and she will fly again. I'm sure of it. And something else new. Sadi Leia's AI for the first time incorporates an android, an anthropomorphic robot that interacts with the crew, but it is the ship itself. You talk to the robot and it does things. That is, you talk to the robot and the ship itself responds. It's just an interface. I thought you didn't have that. Androids. It's unusual. That's why we are weirded out by it. And Yazi, a question. You are Yazi Sophia Swaru, yes? Last time I checked, yes. Not Yazi. Sophia Swa? Ah, I understand your question. Yes, I am Sophia Svaru, and Tina is Athena Svaru. The only Zva as such is Mari, Queen Mari Zva, first of Tamar. But she had to do that to be crowned queen, didn't she? It seems that in itself it was only a political matter for Zvaruvovera, not a biological one. But I liked the idea of being a separate race. But as Mari says, there is no genetic basis for that. But genetics is not what defines a race, but it's a way of living. Because Tigetans 
generalizing, cannot do the things you do. Your mind and consciousness defines the race. Yes, that's true. But if we go that way, each one of us is a race, a unique specimen by right. And so it is. No, they can't do what we do. But you said it yourself. Generalizing. Because there is no reason why they can't. And the same with some humans out there that have special abilities. It's a matter of ideas. Yes, and in Mary's last video, there is something that will leave many with uncertainty. It is the year 2025, related to a solar maximum. Yes, the false plandemias are linked with solar maxima or minima. But that is artificial. The cabal makes it up. So this was then processed with holographic computer and we see strong danger for the end of this year, but more for 2025 with the solar maximum. You encountered the non-human drone lately, didn't you? Tell me about that. What Yashi here is referring to is our camping trip with Robert, his sister, one other friend, Bongo and I, about a month ago. I didn't see it, but the friend and Robert saw what they think, and I think, is a drone. So Robert tells Yaski about it. Yeah, look! We were camped on top of a mountain. Gosha went for a walk by herself, and I took my drone out to fly. Bongo was sleeping in the tent, and next to me was our friend, Jatea talking to my sister who is a skeptic, and the controls of my drone warned me that I had to return the drone due to lack of batteries, so I returned it, and in the distance near the ground, what I and Jatea saw was a glow, a sphere that was totally transparent. It looked like the wings of a giant dragonfly, and there we saw that it was not normal. The size of a tennis ball or a grapefruit? I would say the size of my drone with the wings open, or maybe the size of my drone with the wings closed. We even waved at it because we clearly saw it. It was artificial and we ran after it to catch it, and it ran away. It is difficult to calculate the size of a drone because its own energetic toroid distorts the image. They don't look like that when they are turned off. They are an aluminium-colored ball filled with camera lenses and sensor holes. This is what they look like off. They contain a small zero-point reactor inside. It was smooth. We thought it was a bubble. But up close, we saw that it wasn't. It was just something strange, like a crystal ball. Drone. Another moment in the conversation. Yes, he holds the move. You said it was difficult? It's just that when you have your whole life in one place, whether it's a ship or not, it's hard to leave not only the place behind, but also your things, the things you don't need and that you can't take with you. Only 30 people packing things scattered throughout the length and breadth of a ship of almost 2 kilometers. It was a lot of work. We left a lot of things behind. Like my three-wheeled scooter, which is already too small for me. And we still haven't finished moving and arranging everything. My room is full of boxes of stuff and I can't find the time to take them out. Why is it small if you don't grow? What do you mean? Well, I feel that it used to fit me well. That's how I feel. It was almost the same as this one, also from Spider-Man. But you helped put your things in boxes? Yeah, I don't like them taking my stuff. Maybe now you can have an electric one. I already have one, and I crashed it the other day. Nothing happened to it but yes to me. 
I scraped my knees and almost broke my right wrist. I imagine you'll be wearing a helmet, knee pads and elbow pads. No. Yikes. And why was that? Why did you crash? Because the huge cardboard plane I strapped to the handlebars went sideways. You were riding the cardboard plane at the same time? Yep. And did Naishara say anything to you? Yes, they scolded me again. They say I don't have good motor skills, unlike Mari, who never falls down. Well, she did once, when she walked backwards into a sack of beans in the kitchen. Okay, and Yaski, what about second contact? And the 900 cadets? What will they do? It was stopped by orders of the Galactic Federation. They will view it as insubordination if it goes ahead. They see it as highly invasive to the Matrix and to the rights of humans not to be interrupted in their development. And what was the reaction of the cadets? Well, disappointed. But they still continue with their necessary training. They have other duties, and you never know what will happen tomorrow. But I don't understand. That's what the star seeds also do when they enter. Yes, but that is not as direct as what we wanted to do, or so the Galactic Federation says. So they won't be sent home. They are cadets. They have a lot to do and learn. They make Taigeta's two big ships fly. They have a lot of duties, and not just learning, like maintenance, running systems of all kinds. Toleka suffered a lot of neglect for having so few crew. The Alcyone and Asterope are two fully crewed ships, necessary to keep them on alert and ready for anything. It's 450 per Alcyone class ship, 900 between the two ships. Okay, and about the android, what else can you say about it? Well, we can't bring ourselves to turn it on. We are afraid that the android will go crazy and kill us all. Well, it is understood that it is a reflection of your society. That's right. And our fear of that is a reflection of interference from terrestrial movies. I accept that. We are afraid of that android, her, because she is female. But what purpose does it serve? It is an interface to interact with the rest of the crew as if the ship were another crew member. <laughs> is this the first time you have something like this? Maybe, yes. Taiketa is not much into robots. There were robots in other places in Taiketa, yes, yes, but not here with us. Toleka didn't have this thing. And it is biological-like skin? It looks the same, yes, indistinguishable. She even has nice painted nails. <laughs> what does she look like? Typical Taigetan. Tall, blonde, attractive, blue eyes, long golden hair. Now, Yassi, don't do anything to her. Like Indian makeup or something like that. <laughs> don't give me any ideas. Or sticking glue on the soles of her shoes. <laughs> no, because it could damage it. And I don't think I know if it repairs itself or what. And how is she dressed? Typical uniform. Black with the ship's shield. So it will be active 24 hours a day. I guess so. But for the moment, she's still in a special closet in the Saviklaya's computer room. The one behind the bridge. And will it be activated at some point? I don't know. No one dares to. It's a little scary. We don't want it to cause another problem. But I think it goes with the memory of Sadie's ship's AI. Yes, it's linked to the onboard computer. It doesn't work independently.
another moment of the conversation. In what language are treaties signed out there? In several. Mostly, they sign it in the languages of the people concerned, not necessarily only one. So that treaty Mari signed between Asi on the council and Urma, how was it signed? In Tagetan, Urma and Jena. Jena is the English of the Pleiades. Weren't Jena from higher densities and not physical? There are those there too, but as everyone else, the Jena do have physical counterparts, as we all do. Jena are higher realms, yes, but not only. Another moment in the conversation. Mari is the strongest Zvaru, or Zva now, of all time. Stronger than you, Yashi? I've been criticized a lot for saying I am the strongest. But I can't handle Mari. My small body can't sustain more energy without burning out. Mari, being bigger, is a locomotive. She pulls everything. I can't handle Mari's volume. It's like an electrical circuit. We are both, say, 220 volts, but Mari has more amperage than me. My small body can't channel as much energy as Mari's body, which is already almost 170 centimeters tall. She pulls it all. She can do it all. She takes on tremendous responsibilities and achieves them. That's why she is the locomotive. Because she pulls everything. She is stronger than Alamin. And in the short time she has been queen, she is already causing a stir and strong changes. She is daring to go against the Federation alone. And she is recruiting allies.